boundary of the lines. Now I can go back and adjust my circle if I see any imperfection. Um, I see a little bit up here need to be more even. It can be very lightly so you don't ruin the circle. Up here I need to go a little more in. Hello, tempting lashes. make sure that your brush is really free of gel paint because you doesn't need any gel for this. There are already gel around the circle. All you need to do is touch it and guide it. Therefore, you don't need any gel paint on your brush. If you have too much gel paint, you might be um, overdoing it and it might ruin your circle from having too much gel on your brush. With uh, uh, are you doing models every day now? Not every day, but more than maybe. usual. So maybe. Mm. maybe. Now I'm going to cure this. For a design like this, which have a circle in it that are see through, you either have to dig a hole or you have to do a uh, clear nail. Either way, it consider custom nails, which means you can take as much time as possible because you do need to charge more for custom nails. Custom nails are non-typical nails, um, nails that require you to um, interfere with the structures. Like if you dig a hole, the nail will be slightly weaker. That call custom nails. Or if you're not digging a hole and you have a clear nail, that well, then you have to start that nail over if your client come for fear. You got a uh, either soak that nail out or grind that nail out and then start over with a crystal clear nail. So that extra work. However, you don't have to include that hole, but you do need to know how to do it. With an all white background, I will now use my brown ink. So I make sure that I shake it well before I use. I will put this in the middle. Now, before I put ink on here, what I have to do is take, shine it, and apply on that hole. The reason why I do this, because the ink is incredibly potent. If if you don't boost, uh, shine it on, then there's a possible chance that the ink, it will stain the clear background mm -hmm. from being too strong. So by putting shine it on, shine it is an ink block. So this one, it will block all your ink. It will be on and you can just wipe it off and there will be no trace of the ink left behind. I will start with the first now from left to right. You just go straight down from top to bottom. What you don't want to do is you don't want to start in the middle because that will make a weird texture that doesn't uh, look very flat. Wow. Funny. Yeah. You're currently being cheated on. No, no, no. You're currently people. Right now, you have to be better than me. So, throw your cheese on. 
And I noticed that when I go slow, it creates a very interesting texture. It's, it's have, you have more vein, more uh, onto the nails. <clears throat> Honey. Yeah. The touch is over there doing fun stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, when you go slow like this, because ink is bleed other ink. So when you go really slow, what it do is that it bleed the inside of it. It take it away, but then on both sides, it make the line more drastic. So that is something cool too that you should know. think if I read all this properly, honey, um, people came back because they want to see the wood of the man the touch glamour has for us in France. Yeah. I mean, if she's ever going to be able to lure us in, I think right now is the time. I mean, if she's like, you know, invite her out and that split screen stuff, we're going to have a free one. Yeah. Uh, I missed what is on top of Y and how well did you cure? That's nothing on top of Y. Uh, I'm just using normal Y polish. However, I try not to forget um, after I'm done with all this, I want to do an experiment for you guys. I want to start with three now. One is with Y polish only, one with matte top coat, the other one with shine top coat, and we will see how well would pattern do on this surface? See right there, I'm just touching it and going really slow, see that? See how it's eat the inside, but then on both sides, it give it a very distinct lines, almost like burn into the wood. Good look on your business. Now this, you still do the same thing. Don't be afraid to go through the circle because you're already protecting it. So it will not stain the background at all. Now, if you don't protect it, you either have clear acrylic on the background because you have to start with uh, uh, clear nails and clear acrylic uh, ink is able to stain clear acrylic, so you don't want that. Um, well, I think Wave Gel is a gel polish. It's a gel polish. So, uh, gel polish, is it? Find it? It's on Amazon. To click on white, uh, white weight gel, you will see it popping up. Um, however, you should have test your uh, your white gel first because your white gel it might work for you. I don't know what brand you have, but uh, the reason why we you weight gel because not all white polish is the same. It's created differently. They have different tacky layer on it, so you have to test out your gel if you want to achieve a certain effect. If you just want to use it for color, then it can be whatever you choose. Right now, so far, uh, from my knowledge on this, it can be any gel that you like for the wood. Because we're not doing pigment, we're doing wood. I'm taking an oval brush. Oval brush and I'm just slightly wipe the inside of it. I'm using oval brush because oval brush, it have a round tip. It's very easy to um, wipe round curved shape. <clears throat> I missed that part. What was used to protect the clear circle? Uh, I used 
shine it and shine it is a pigment um not it is a pigment block right. but it's also is an ink block from my knowledge shine it pretty much block everything except for chrome it's attracted to chrome other way um it's block everything else that were coming at it now i'm gonna start painting uh, for this i do need my surface to be matte that will help with traction when i use uh, paint so i apply matte on all the nails one here for 60 seconds. Two. Now, if you want to have a palette out. <clears throat> yes, Janet is a top coat. Yes, it's a scratch proof top coat and a blooming gel at the same time. So it's two in one. And sin is a no wipe top coat that make it the first blooming gel that are no wipe in the market today. Now, I, uh, if you want, you can apply your mat out on your, the palette. So the mat, it doesn't contaminate your bottles because from my knowledge, mat do bleed a little bit on either pigment, uh, also chrome, also ink, if you play with it for too long. So even if you are confident about it, it's still a very good habit to apply your mat separately out in a palette and then you paint with it and then after you can just cleanse it before you put it back in the bottle. That way your mat will be nice and white because uh, if not, then later on when you apply mat on a white surface, there is a possibility that it might turn out not white. It might turn out like uh, up white just from contamination, even though you couldn't see the contamination on the brush. Still, like this, you can see a little bit. Let me zoom in. See that? You can see a little bit right here. So I just wipe it up with a paper towel and then put it back into the bottles. Or if you want, you can even take a little acetone, dip it in just to be really sure. Really sure. Put it back into the bottle. Let's take this out. So I start with the middle finger first. I'm going to paint the handle for the Ouija board. Handle? Yes. So for this, I use in black metal fat gels, but you don't have to use that. I just use that because that's my go-to gel paint for now. But you can use any type of gel you want of your choosing, as long as it's not too thin. Preferably a gel pen or liner gel. However, liner gel, you still need to use the art brush because the liner brush is not thin enough for your details. I'm going to head and paint the handle and the handle is look like a triangle, but it's not a triangle. That's curvature to it. So you just have to imagine that it's an upside down heart. Yeah. So this is a point. Upside down heart. Uh, so you can trace around the circle. I kind of feel like upside down heart would be boobs for Jessica Rabbit. Yeah. Now. Hey, Susie. You start from here. 
and you curve it out. You curve out from here. Fill this in. And I'm using a 10 millimeters liner brush. This is 10 millimeter brand liner brush I'm using. From the point, you can go down, go down from here. Now, you can see that angle in the middle, you can just blend it in just to follow the curvature. Then on the bottom, stop from here, you make an upside down V. Then stop from here, you curve it in. Same thing over here. Now you can go back and see that anything you want to perfect. Perfection is actually one of the things that are extra too. When your client requests a certain look, it don't have to be perfect. It can only be perfect if she's a good client. If she's not a good client, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to do it exactly what's required, but you don't have to go in with and make it sharp cut and make it Instagram ready unless that is your purpose is you want to promote it on Instagram. And down here, you can add in uh, some more detail if you want. Uh, let me see. I might uh, do a few curves like this. Whatever you like. You, your imagination. I'm going to go ahead and cure this. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a sun and a moon. So I will start with a sun first. So a sun, again, you do need to draw a circle. I'm going to draw half of the sun. So up here, <coughs> you make two lines across. And you go across and low down, cross, low down, and straight down, down to the right a little bit. Then you can go ahead and connect this. And I'm going to draw the hair for the sun. So the hair for the sun, I'm going to start with a dot right here. And I'm going to space it out very evenly around the sun. Make sure that you try your best to make it even. Very even spacing. Now you can make a little curve. So you go to the left and then you go down. Go to the left and then go down. All the way down. Now, up top, you can do the opposite curve, which is from the dot right here, you go up, 
make another dot just like that try to keep even spacing now from that dot you make the opposite curve like that Just to connect it. How does this level do shit? Now, um, level two, no, it's not. It's just drawing. Yes. I just did a bunch of math. Mm -hmm. Calculate our kittens because mama's giving them the cold the shoulder, or actually the cold nipple. I'm not sure what's going on, but she's not letting them attack her in a succulent way. And I got to thinking, those kittens are at least four months old. six but at a minimum four months old that's maybe weird that would be like if we had a child and they were in second grade and we went in there and breastfed them you know what I mean and I don't know what the math is on cat versus human years but oh but she's giving them the cold shoulder Now, when you go down, you have to remember to start from the tips and keep it nice and thin. And the bottom part, it will touch the others. For example, from here, you start from the tip, go down, and then the bottom, it touch the bottom of the other's hand. Hey, Karen. Oh, these are going to be some of my kittens. Now I'm going to draw the eye of the sun. So for the eye of the sun, I will start a little more down to give it more space for the forehead, probably almost half, but not quite. Make a little dot. Now the eyebrow, I'm gonna arch it just a bit. For the eyes, I'm starving with a leaf shape Painted a dot right in the meadows. On the bottom, you're making a little V for the nose. Little nostril for the sun. And then you draw in the lips, which start with a little V. Slit right below it. And then connect it. Here this. Now I'm going to draw the moon on this side. So the moon is still half of the circle. So this is the back of the moon. You go all the way down, straight down. Now, just the same, you go down a little bit to the left, down a little bit to the left, and then straight across. 
and then down to the lap and then a little bit up. Same on top too. Up a little bit to the left. And then now, just up a little bit and then to the left again. Straight. And then to the left and a little bit more down. Uh, I think this one needs to be out just a little more. Just like that. Now I'm going to trace it. I think my moon might be low small. My moon might be low small, so I'm gonna make it bigger. To make it bigger, the dot needs to be going all the way to this side. So to the right, up a little bit. To the right, up a little bit. Then up more, up more, up a little bit to the right, up a little bit to the right, across, down. That look like a much bigger moon. Now I'm going to start from here and connecting it. Same thing on the bottom. Now inside, we would draw the face and nose first. So this is the eyes. Making a little curve like that. That's the eye. And then the eyebrow, I curve the opposite way. The forehead, I do a curve to the left. Like this. Then the nose, I go down. Draw nostril. Now, slant it to the right. Then slant it to the left again. And I'm going to paint it uh, lips. Now, I go ahead and make another line down and then I'm gonna start connecting it from the tip to the chin same so up here from the tip to the forehead then I'm gonna cure this Now I'm going to paint word on this. So the first word is the word yes. For this, the Y is start out with a V. Going down, we'll come back to that. The E, Slanted it just a little bit, but not much, all the way down. Then from the middle, you go across just a little. From the top, you curve it up just a little bit. Bottom, curve it down just a little bit. We come back to that. Now we draw the word S, and that's semi difficult too. On top, you curve a little. On the bottom, you curve a little bit. 
a slit right in the middle and then you connect it. We'll come back to that. So the Y on this side, the left side is slightly bigger than on the right side. Then you painted a little leg for it. It's like a little mustache. Same thing on top. Like an upside down mustache. Same with the E. This right here is slightly thicker than the rest. Now, in the middle, you painted a, a slight curve to the left. Same with the top, same with the bottom. On here, the middle part is much bigger than the rest. Actually, I need to put a little more on the bottom too. Okay. And then you painted little arms for that. Now, you can go ahead and cure this. And then we'll come back to this later. Now we're gonna paint the word no. Lettering is also semi-tricky, especially when you have to fit the nail. Now, no, it's semi-easy. You paint it two lines down, and then you connect them. Uh, actually, you make that two lines slightly thicker. Okay, now you're connecting that. Now, on here, you painted little arms for it. Same with up here. Then you can uh, adjust this a little just so it's, the length is equal to both sides, like this. And then you can paint the O now. The O is semi-easy too. Mark it, the top and the bottom. This side, you curve it to the left. This side, you curve it to the right. Now, the left, you want to make it slightly more thicker. Just like that. Then you can go ahead and cure it for 67. Now we're going to paint it cloud for these. So let's start with the yes first. For the cloud, I'm going to head and curve it to the left just a little. From the top, curve it, curve it all the way to the right. Stop. On here, you curve it to the right and meet it and meet with this. So now it becomes a squiggly line. On here, you do an opposite curve. So from the top, you curve to the right. Stop. Here, you curve just a little bit to the left to blend it in. Up here, curve to the left also. Down here, just because the top curving up, so you want to curve to the bottom just like that. 
on here, same thing, you curve on the bottom. And then you do an opposite curve, you curve to the top. Okay. You can also do another one like this. And I'll make a few more around this. Make another cloud on here. From the top, you curve all the way to the right. Stop right in the middle, you curve a little bit to the left. On the bottom, you curve down. Then you can do an opposite curve and cut up. Yeah, you curve it up and you just fuse it together just like that. Just like that. For the moon, I want to do this pattern right here, which is semi tricky, but I pick it up from a Ouija board pattern. And I do want to make, make this pattern. So we're going to do it now. For that pattern, all I'm doing is, paint, is dotting this in a curve line. Same thing here dot in the, in the curve line up here the same thing dot in the, in the curve line now what I do is I paint across like this and keep going until you fill up the whole things Same thing over here. Just all the way across. Now you can go ahead and color it in. So I'm making a curve here. And then I fill it in with a black. I leave a little bit on the edge. Same thing on the bottom. Inside, doing the same thing too. Just like that. Same thing over here. Thing over here.
and then we're gonna go ahead and clear this now I'm painting stars all over these so on the Sun give it little stars little twinkles so start with a dot right here make sure your brush is uh, sort of gel free so it can be pointy and then you're going down across remember the gender angle of your brush Cross. and up then you can go you can make a little x if you want i shall do this to all over the nails It's doing weedy for effect. But who would? Woody. <clears throat> I kind of what you do in the glitter. I know it's not traditional, but you know, I'm wondering if Ouija boards were made out of glitter, if it'd be a little less scary. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, another thing I want to show you is when you want to do star all over uh, pretty much every finger. I usually start with one angle like this, down, down, and I do that to every fingers. Then I go back and I go up. Sometimes I tilt it, people hand like this so it's easier for me to go down and I do that to every finger then I tilted the hand like this and I go down down to every finger then I tilted the hand over and I go down down on every finger therefore I don't have to turn my brush on one individual star and then start another star and then down and then left, right, and turn my brush. I don't have to. If you choose one direction all the way through. Make sure that it's very, you touch very lightly on the tips. Drink, 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 drink. Technically now, you don't even have to top coat because this gel, black metal effect, it doesn't need top coat. However, I can see this one I painted a little thick. So I'm gonna touch it to see it's a little thick right here. So I need to top coat this. Because if it's too thick, you cannot just leave it alone like this. Because it will peel easy if your customer is rough on it. So, if you chew in the beginning, just do not top coat it. Then you have to be careful with your paint that you distribute it out. Make sure that it's not too thick, so it can cure properly. So how do you know if you're rough? Know what? How do you know if your ornament is rough? Um, you will know her. Um, the first couple of visits, you'll know how rough she is. 
We ask her if she likes a upside down pineapple or something, and she says yes. Yeah, Sometimes I one. use this uh, technique on a couple of my clients. No, not a couple of oh, my clients. I use this technique of not top coating and about 90% totally fine with it, but there are way one or two odd duck that will come back with it to be chips. Yes. Therefore, you got to know your client too. But overall, you should just know that if you plan to not to top coat it in the beginning, then you should have to be a little thinner. That's all. Brush over with matte. Same thing here, brush over with matte. But honey, matte looks a little creepy. Same thing here. So this is another Halloween design that you can do and you have to still you have uh, about I would say a month and a half to practice or a month I would say you have a month left to practice Halloween design now on on this one, I do want to return the shine right back to it. So I take shine it. I open the lid. Then I apply it right in the middle. Now you can use an art brush to apply this if it's easier for you. I just use a shortcut. But if you're not well with your brush, you should just use uh, an art brush to fill it in so it can be crystal clear. Here it is. Thank you, baby sweet. Still waiting for that other one to cure. All right, so. This is a design for today. It's a Ouija board design. Hope you enjoy it. And remember that is your homework. So remember to practice the technique that you on this beside painting technique is a wood technique. Now, I want to run an experiment um, with you on the wood. So I take three nails out. Let's put this, let's put this right here. <clears throat> feel like Bill Nye is a science guy right now. You got me all excited. Yeah. What are those beakers for over there? Mm -hmm. The Bunsen burner and the beakers. What do you mean? Doing their fire. Now I'm taking white shells. And I applied it on three nails.
One, two, three. You painted Y on all three. This is a moment when you know if you can use matte or shine, or if you cannot accomplish your wood pattern, you will know maybe it's a white shell that you're using. So let's see. So this is all Y. Put it in here for 60 seconds. Another one. Two. Three. <clears throat> Let it cure. Now I will take out my matte and sand it. Let you matte first. Hi, Choo Choo Matt. Good evening. Maybe you got to talk about here in the middle of experimenting before they think you're teaching something. This is teaching too. Okay, we're teaching you how to succeed or come up with a different technique. So this is a white shell. I'm just gonna leave it white. I'm not gonna tamper with this. This now I will put matte. And then I will cure it for 60 seconds. So this is a matte top coat. Now, the other now I will put shine. Cure this. All right, so this is white, matte, and then we will have shine. So let's see. This is a brown ink that I'm using. Of course, I know how it turned out on um, the all white polish with nothing on top. I just painted it from top to bottom. and it will make the wood for you. So this is my brown ink. This is the first ink that I made. It's brown and white ink, and then I make black ink. I make brown ink serve, uh, it serves other purpose, but mainly uh, it serves purpose of drawn wood. But I use it for aging too. Like if I want a surface to look aged, like if I draw like a golden compass uh, theme or like a Nautica theme, something that like an old map, I also use this ink. Now we haven't know what it's gonna be. This is gonna be matte and shine. So let's try brown ink to see what happened on the mat. At first glance, it looked light. You still see the line, but not quite as much as the other nails. Uh, from my knowledge, this is because it's very well absorbing. It, uh, to absorb. Oh, this white ink, I do need to kill a little more, see how wrinkled it is, but it's fine. Mm. It's an experiment. Okay, so matte to me is too absorbing. You still can do the work, but it do take a little longer for the pattern to emerge. But it's still doable-ish. You just have to stroke a little more. So that is a mat. Let's try on the shine. Ooh, I don't think the shine will work. It's too slippery and runny. This is good for marble, but definitely not good for wood. See, it just keep, because it 
remember stranded is a uh, ink blocker too so it, it it do not absorb at all however it can stay on here but if you if you paint over it again it will bleed the uh the ink behind it so however the pattern is still kind of cool actually so that's it. Now you see what happened when it on matte, what happened when it on shine. I prefer to be on nothing. This wrinkle a little bit, but it's, it's okay. So this pattern is my favorite pattern. However, if you like to put matte on it, you can. If you like to put shine on it, you can too. Just to experiment with it a little bit more. All right, so tomorrow I will have another live at six. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow live, I want to demonstrate uh, this design. This is a vertical ombre design. Uh, I want to demonstrate this tomorrow on the vertical ombre design that I make with four leaf. So tomorrow I will uh, come up at six and demonstrate that design. Let me put together here. So after I get off live, you can go in and watch the process. Remember to do your homework. All right, zoom it up here. I hope you guys enjoy the live today. First, what palette? Second, is matte and third is shine. Yes, Nora. Thank you. Can you use something other than ink? Because I don't have brown ink. Um, I don't. I don't think it'll be uh, the same look, uh, Ali. Um, you can get by with, I guess, uh, alcohol ink. Uh, you are able to do it. However, this right here is not really a skill. It's just a technique. And it's a technique that depends entirely on this product. Because remember, I want to use product that people can rely on so they don't need skill. So with that, you do need the product because without the product, it would be almost impossible to achieve a look. You just have to paint it manually. You just have to take brown gel and you just have to dry to shade it and then mix brown gel with a little black and try to make this little line right here and then maybe shade it a little bit and try to be careful so your line not too thick or you know, make sure that it's thin and make sure that it's not too exact, not too crisp. You have to make sure that it's like this kind of natural like wood but the easiest is to use brown ink so if you don't have brown ink you just have to manually uh, take care of that to gel you are welcome uh, Melly Beans all right I will see you tomorrow for vertical ombre design guys really turn out like the shade wood thank you thank you everyone I hope you have a good night and I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye. And you can check this out after the live. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow.